Well, it's Wednesday, and you all know what that means. That means, once again, as you know, in Japan, we are still in the road to Sakura Genesis by New Japan Pro Wrestling. We have a couple of prelude matches before we get there. As you know, Evil will defend the Never Openweight title against Shingo, while Shingo faces Kanemura. Kanemura. And then, of course, we have Shota Umino teaming up with Yo. As you know, Yo continues to torture Sho for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. And, of course, Yoda Suji and Tetsuya Naito. And then, of course, we have AEW Dynamite. We have some very interesting matches. We have, of course, the semifinals of the AEW World Tag Team titles. Who will walk out as the winners? Will it be Best Friends, Orange Cassidy, and Trent Breda? Or will it be the EVPs themselves, the Young Bucks? And of course, we have a number one contendership between Thunder Rosa and Mariah May. Whoever will challenge, of course, Tony Storm. That's going to be a very interesting matchup. But first things first, as you know, we just started the month um, of April. Pro Wrestling Noah had their latest show, uh, Monday Magic, with some very interesting surprise matches. From wrestlers from Dragon Gate and other promotions as well. And I did mention Julia as well. And then we move on with some news updates to end the whole episode. With of course what's been going on in the world of pro, pro wrestling. Such as what events the promotions are throwing out. Who's booked. What matches are set. And developments that's been happening in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed. So let's get ready for another episode of the Weeded Wrestle Zone. To the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things as pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Ruddy here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions from, from not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something interesting in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be, of course, spread upon and then of course we have the Unagi Sayaka watch and various other cool things as well so if you like what you see please subscribe to us so click on that subscribe button you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel but if you like this episode please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below now all introductions are set aside I must give you guys a warning I don't know if you guys hear some noise in the background that is just my fan because it's hot in here. It's over there now. If there is a noise messed up, no, um, a pretty loud noise, I apologize. So it's just hot. I'm sweating and I'm just trying to be cool as possible. But enough of that chit chat. I believe it's time for our very first review, and this is from Pro Wrestling Noah. Okay, Pro Wrestling Noah. As you know, they just started with Season 2 of Monday Magic. Now, this is a show that's normally produced by Nosawa Run Guy. They do about maybe one or two shows a month. Now, these shows in particular, they're like uh, a show where you don't know who you're going to expect or you're going to see or wit matches. Sometimes they bring in wrestlers from outside of different promotions. Not only that, they even invite, of course, Yoshi wrestlers to compete as well. Uh, we did have uh, Nusawa Rungai and some other dude. I don't know his name. Uh, they were, in fact, doing a promo until someone the a song began to play, and it was none other than Julia. 
Now, I don't need to tell you so much about what happened. As you know, Julie was there. Ron Guy decided to propose to her. She turned him down big time. So it was pretty cool that many people saw and were happy to see Julia. So it was a big surprise, but nonetheless, it was something that I guess many people did not expect. Now, our very first match is a very interesting one. It's all about Viva Mexico. So basically, we have four luchadores. We have the two brothers, Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf. They take on the current Open the Dream Gate champion, Luis Monte, and of course, our current GHC heavyweight champion, El Hijo Dr. Wagner Jr. That's right, the two top champions in their respective promotions, neck to neck. And I thought it was a pretty good match. I mean, this was something I think many fans will love to see in Japan because you know you're fascinating. If you're a Japanese native, you know how awesome watching Japanese uh, Mexican wrestling is cool to watch. <coughs> and I thought it was pretty good. But it was a very interesting with a with Luis Monte, what he did. He picked up an amazing one. He did like a pop-up powerbomb on Alpha. And just like that, he picked up the win for him and his team. So very interesting. Now our next match, we have Rohe Oiwa taking on Keno. Now, Keno would take great pleasure and try to humiliate Keito Kiyomiya. Now, their history goes way back for many years. And of course, Roiwa was by him, uh, Oiwa was by himself, and Keno was like saying, where the hell is Keito? I thought he was going to be in your corner. So he took great pleasure. But of course, Keno was going to put a hurt on him no matter what. And that's exactly what he did. Um, not to mention, he even tried it. He even did the shining wizard on Rohiwa to send a direct message to to Kiyomiya, and then he applied the double foot stomp, and just like that, it was over. Our next match, we have a pair of Yoshi wrestling tag match. We have the Great Sakuya and Nagisa Nozaki taking on Nanashi and uh, Miyuki Takase. Nanashi is like a ghost with this crazy weapon that she'll try to cut you into pieces. Now, Miyuki Takase, she's afraid of her because you don't want to be friends with her at all. But of course, I was so pumped for this match because Nanashi is crazy. But as for the Sakuya, she is not. But you would think there was going to be some interesting moments. However, um, Nanashi just got missed in the face by Grace Sakuya. And then, of course, applied. And then, of course, um, Sakuya did the moonsault. And it was over right from there. And then, of course, Nanashi chases Miyuki Takase like it was like a horror film. But I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, our next match, we have Yu Owada. Junta Miyawaki and um, what's his name? Oh yeah, Masakita Miya. They take on the members of GLG, Tadasuke, Yohei, and Jake Lee. Uh, pretty good match. Now keep in mind there would have been an opportunity for both uh, uh, Junta Miyawaki to possibly defeat, um, of course, Tadasuke and Yo uh, Yohei in order to win the match to get a chance at the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. But that did not do any well because Owada, who was a real troop, trooper, did everything possible against Yohei. But Yohei applied the drop kick, and just like that, it was over. However, while the match was over, a theme song just began to play, and it turned out to be Asama Kodaka and, of course, Yuto, uh, Yuko uh, Miyamoto. So basically, the guys from Freedoms or well recognized in the deathmatch scene appeared. It appears look like they want to be their next challengers for the GHC Tag Team titles. So, GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. So, I'm looking forward to see when that day happens. Now, our next match, we have Eitza, who has come back. He teams up once again with Hayata. They take on um, Yoshinari Og 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 Ogawa. And he teams up with, uh, with Ghetto. Now, you would think this match was going to be interesting. But, however, something interesting has come about. Ghetto turned on Ogawa. I don't know what he did. He had a chair, and I thought in my mind he was about to do that on Hayata, but it did not. He just attacked them, and it became like a battle royale. I mean, Eita and Hayata go after either Ghetto or Ogawa. So, it just went crazy, as you know. But, yeah. So, that's what happened. Now, our next match, we have Oka Zazaki taking on Keito Kiyomiya. Of course, Kiyomiya, as you know, he's been 
He knows that he's been dealing with Kenna, who's been um, bad mouthing him, saying negative things. Even though Kimia is not going to let him phase him, but he has to focus on Zazaki. And I thought the match was pretty okay. I thought it was like a very decent. But as always, he he channeled the spirit of his idol um, Keiji Muto, and then he applied, of course, the Shining Wizard to take on Zazaki, and just like that, it was complete over. So I thought the show was pretty great, except you know I seeing Julia appear in Noah. I think this is going to be a good recognition because we know that Rossi Ogawa sent her so she could help launch the new promotion. We will find out more about that. But the rest of the matches are great. I think they're fun. So, um, you should check them out if you can. So, I think that's pretty much it. With Noah, let's move on with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. We continue with more with Road to Sakura Genesis by New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is their much recent show on a Wednesday. Uh, it opened up with Katsuya uh, Murishima and Shoma Kato taking on those pieces of garbage. House of Torture more consistently of uh, Yujiro Takahashi and Evil. Now, of course, Dick Togo was going to be there. He was going to help. That's exactly what happened. Even Dick got himself involved in this match. And then, of course, uh, Yujiro. Then, a tr and then he applied the pimp juice in order to pick up the win. Evil told uh, Shomakata and, and Murashima, Just quit, guys. You're not cut out for it. Well, because he thinks he's the law. Well, he's, he's a fool of himself. Now our next match, we have all members of just five guys. Taka Michinuku, Doiki, Yuya Uemura, Taichi, and Sanada. They take on the combined forces of Bolton Oakleg, um, Tiger Mask, Rusuke Taguchi, uh, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and of course, Toto Yano. Now, of course, uh, there is history between Yano with most of the members of of just five guys more specifically Sonata, Taichi and I forgot who else but anyway you would think that was going to be it but no um, it was in fact Uromuro who picked up the win with a cross body uh, onto Tiger Mask allowing themselves to win our next match we have El Desperado and Yoshi Yoshihashi teaming up for the first time they take on Bullet Club's uh, Taiji Shimuri and um, Chase Owens. Now, don't forget Chase Owens. As you know, he is threatened by the fact that there's the possibility of a chance that Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto could challenge him and Kenta for the GH for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Titles. However, Taiji Shimuri has some unfinished business towards Desperado as we get closer and closer to the best of the Super Juniors. That's going to be interesting. But however. Taiji Shimori got away with it by applying a low blow onto Despi and then applying the ghetto clutch on him. And one, two, three, it picked up the win. I'm sure Despi will love nothing more to get revenge for what Taiji Shimori did to him. Now, our next match this is a stipulation that, uh, not a stipulation, more like an implication for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. Um, we have the United Empire more in a trios match. Um, Kamen Newman, Francesco Akira, and TJP taking on uh, Jet Setters, um, Kevin Knight, and Kushida teaming with uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, the match went pretty well, I have to say, but in the end, it was in fact Ishii with the vertical uh, brain buster on Kyle Newman, and just like that, the win. But however, uh, Ishii and uh, the Jet Setters have to prepare themselves due to the fact that that they were facing against the current champions, um, Jilla Maloney and Clark Connors, along with Ghetto. Now, you know for a fact that the that the War Dogs will love nothing more than leave Carnage to ensure that they these guys do not make it for a chance to, to challenge them for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. That is the case. But, however, it was Kevin Knight with a spike DDT onto Ghetto, and they picked up the win. However, Kevin and I came up with the perfect idea. Let's have 
a tornado tag team match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title. So basically, United Empire, more specifically, Catch to Two wouldn't mind, and not, but of course, neither will the War Dogs. So basically, we'll probably get that announced soon, and I can't wait to see how that match will roll up. So we'll see. Our next match, we have Yoshinobu Kanemaru and versus Shingo Tagagi. Now keep in mind, Shingo will be facing Evil for the Never Openweight Title. Now, as always, when it comes to Kanemaru as a member of House of Torture, Ref was out. And then, of course, Ref called no contest because Kanemaru no knocked out the Ref. And, of course, that those pieces of garbage, House of Torture, they continue to beat up uh, Shingo Tagagi no matter what. Now, some of you may question, where the hell is uh, um, LIJ? Well, LIJ are had to prepare themselves because they were in a showdown main event. But sh somehow, Evil said that he had... Pulled some strings for their match this Saturday, saying that this match will have Kanemaru as the ref. You know, this is typical evil. He thinks that everybody is evil, but not him. He thinks that he's the law. He's trying to protect what is rightfully his. But sometimes things may or may not go his way. But we'll see. I'm sure Shingo will have something pulled up, up his ass and find a way to... Make sure Kanemaru does not do the fast count. You know Shingo will notice that one way or the other, but we'll see. Our next match, we have Shota Umino and Yo taking on the other members of House of Torture, Renorita and Sho. Now, this is a very interesting thing. If Yo is able to win this match, he will love nothing more than have a match against Sho at Sakura Genesis. Sho has no interest. He feels that he doesn't deserve to have a title, and plus he feels like his undefeated record is um how do i say questionable but however he hasn't even defended the title that's why he's too scared of him but however it uh, yo took care of that when he applied the direct drive onto him to pick up the win however the funny moment happened after the match was over is when yo decided to play a little vin um uh, uh do some ventriculism you know those things with the puppet and the guy talks with his mouth like like that he was doing that with yo and i thought it was funny saying that it will be a fair match no outside interference or nothing and yo is like already out of it like he doesn't know what the hell is going on but i thought it was really funny that he got away with it <laughs> but yeah now our main event is an lij showdown we have bushi and yoda cg teaming up uh they take on hiromu takahashi and tetsuya naito I thought this match was going to be very fantastic because A, uh, we know Yoda CG will t uh, take on Naito at Sakura Genesis for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. <coughs> so basically, we'll see that. But the ending of this match was not the most important one. It was how it happened. Bushi <sighs> was the one who picked up the win when he did the Bushi roll. Onto Hiramu and pick up the win. I thought it was like an upset in some ways, but it was great. Not to mention a good promo by Bushi talking about the best in Super Juniors. We'll see how that goes out. I'm super excited, but however, the showdown between Yo and Naito, that's something we don't want to miss. So we'll get to that when that day comes. But I think for right now, we'll leave things as it is with New Japan and move on with AEW Dynamite. AEW Dynamite. Uh, it opened up with Adam Copeland uh, giving out a very interesting promo. Now, some people believe this promo is a way to, um, after that whole thing with CM Punk about what he said about AEW, and I like what he said, um, Adam Copeland. He says that it's a great time to be a wrestling fan because he himself is a wrestling fan. He grew up watching WWF. Uh, promotions even from Canada and it even talked about wrestlers that you know he has ever dreamed of wrestling like Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, The Bucks, FTR, those guys but he also believes that we should celebrate AEW and I think he's right you know I mean people I mean we still have like a lot of WWE loyalists out there who 
want nothing more to see AEW fail and just go away and just let WWE be at the top of the of the food chain. But no, it's not gonna happen. But Adam Copeland put like that that AEW made pro wrestling better in this, in, <coughs> in every way possible. So <coughs> I thought it was a very fantastic way. Now, of course, Copeland um, introduced uh, the mat the one of the competitors for the for the first match of the night, Will Ospreay, who will be facing against Powerhouse Hobbs. Now, is no denying that Hobbs is a very strong and powerful dude, but will Will Ospreay overcome it? I mean, look, we saw how Hobbs tried to dismantle Ospreay outside the ring. He even tried to dodge some of Will Ospreay's moves, such as the Hidden Blade, as one of them. But he was a but Will Ospreay was able to apply the Hidden Blade and take him out. But as soon as the match was over in the post match, Hobbs was like a bit pissed. He wanted to take him out, but however, uh, um, that weasel Don Callis tries to reason with um, with Hobbs. I don't know what he said to him, but yeah, so that's what exactly happened. But however, much like what we saw with Eddie Kingston, if you guys remember, Brian Danielson showed up at uh, Will Ospreay's expense. Because he was facing against Lance Archer, a very strong and different dude. Now you would think that Lance Archer would have had the much opportunity. I mean, him a being powerful dude, yes. But however, uh, Brian Danson was refuses to give up, no matter how much violence Lance Archer can put upon him. But it was of course the boost psycho knee that made the real difference for him and knocked out Lance Archer to pick up the win. Now, on top of this. Uh, the ring stage, the, on top of the stage, Rene Paquette had a little interview with um, Chris Jericho, talk about Hook, about telling him, you know, about him being his mentor, but he tells him he's not going to make promises because it's no secret about Jericho, about the people he had with him on his side, and of course, <coughs> um, Hook knows it, so he kind of expects it, so we'll see what happens, but Hook said that he set up a match with him and Jericho at Collision. But as soon as the interview was over, we found out who will accept the challenge. And that is none other than Shane Taylor and uh, Lee Moriarty. So they will be facing Lion Hook this coming Saturday on Collision. Now our next match, we have Jay White versus Daddy Ass. Uh, this is a bit of a revenge for what Jay White and the rest of the guns did breaking into his house. <coughs> You would think that there was going to be some interesting moments. However, we did see that the Acclaim did were attacked while they were watching this event from the back. But of course, um, um, the uh, the Ass Boys were going to show up. And then this match ended in disqualification thanks to Jay White when he low blowed Daddy Ass. And then the Acclaim showed up who have unfinished business with the Ass Boys. So... It was very interesting, but we'll see what happens from here on out. Now, on top of the stage area, Rene Paquette conducts an interview with um, Will Nangelo talked about, of course, uh, her timing there. You know, the one particular place that she used to wrestle and also talk about Chris Sandlander, who was there. Even Stokely Hathaway uh, gave some positive vibes about Will and Nightingale. But however, the CEO... Mercedes Monet was showed up and she made her shot saying that whoever walks out as the winner in Dynasty will be the one to challenge for the TBS title at double or nothing. And that put Willow and goes like, you got to be kidding. Now, some of you may question, why is Mercedes doing it? Simple. I don't think she has forgotten what happened last time. So it feels like they're still going in that story about how Wilton Nightingale defeated Mercedes to win the New Japan Strong Women's title. So we'll see where that leads us from here on out. Now our next match is the semifinals of the AW World Tag Team Title Tournament. We have the Young Bucks and the best friends consisting of Ch uh, Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy. Now the match was pretty great, I have to say. You can tell that this was going to be a very interesting match. But however, um, things did not go according to plan. Trent had Matt Jackson right where he wanted him. And then he rolled him up and then used the tights on him. But you can tell there was a bit of anger with uh, Trent Beretta. 
who was not happy and satisfied and then when the best friends tried to do the hug, he eat turn on Orange Cassidy. Sue was stunned, so was Chuck. So I don't know what is going on there, but yes, so that's what's gonna be interesting. Now our next match is a number one contendership for the AW women's title. Uh, we have Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa. So as you know, Thunder Rosa has been making progress since her return, not to mention making a pleading case saying, I did not lose this belt, I had to relinquish it. So Mariah May has to do what she can in order to prevent Thunder Rosa to, from reaching it. It did not do any well because apparently Thunder Rosa applied the Tijuana bomb and of course Thunder Rosa will be seeing... Um, Tony Storm, I think, in Dynasty. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, as you know, Adam Copeland mentioned earlier when he won the TNT title that he will do more of the open um, open challenges and defend the TNT title. And the first person who responded is none other than Cero Miedo. That's right. Penta was the one who decided to accept the challenge and he wants this next week and it also became official so we'll be seeing that match soon enough now our next our final uh, segment of the night we see the AEW world title contract between Swerve Strickland and Samoa Joe now Joe has been saying to Swerve Strickland he is not that guy who should be at the top and of course Swerve saying that I understand you're a killer and so am I so he feels that He's in the same level as Samoa Joe. And then, of course, um, all hell broke loose. Uh, Sir Strickland tried to choke him, but it didn't do any well for him. And then he busted him open with the chain. But Sir Strickland was acting like the devil and, and signed the contract in his own blood. And, of course, Samoa Joe did not like that. How he thought that maybe he that Swerve was out of his head. Then he put him through a table. So we will see what happened in Dynasty. So until then, we'll just got to wait and see. I think that's pretty much it right now. With all the reviews, I believe it's time for our last and final thing, news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news update. So let's begin with updates with the promotions for their upcoming events. Uh, Wrestling Revolver, as you know, updated on two new shows that they announced, one for May and one for June. The one for May is called Another Friday. This will take place on May 17th, and they just already announced of uh, two wrestlers that will participate. We have John Moxley and Speedball Mike Bailey. And then, of course, the next show will in will be on the 22nd of June called Cage Wars. They already announced two participants and a match. The two participants are none other than the so-called uh, the Death Match King, BS, Indie God, BS. <laughs> Matt Cardona will be there, taking on, of course, S no, uh, Stingray will also be there. Paul Walter Hauser will be there. I'm so excited to see what he's going to do. And the match have been announced for Cage of Horse. We do have Mance Warner and one called Manders. Now, a very interesting thing was uh, spread upon on to, on X, on the X account. Um, Yuka Sakasaki will be making her AEW Collision debut this coming Saturday. Uh, she'll be facing against Trish Adora. So I'm looking forward to that. So we've been expecting Yuka Sakasaki to make her appearance. And I'm glad that she will do it. Now, as you know, we got some upcoming events for the um, for the Philly. Now, there's one that's been announced, uh, Wrestling Revolver and House of Glory. That will take place on the 5th of April. Uh, Mike Bailey will be facing against Masha Slavich. And then there's the House, the House of Glory Crown Jewel Championship will be defended. Uh, La Sombra Carlos Ramirez will be defending his belt against one called Manders. And then, of course, we have the G, uh, CW Indie Hall of Fame. They announced for Eddie Gilbert. Um, I don't know who he is, but yeah. <coughs> and then, of course, House of Glory has gave a very fantastic news for the Cinco de Mayo event. They announced it, there's going to be a match 
brother versus brother. We have Penta El Cero Miedo taking on his brother, Ray Phoenix. That's going to be a banger of a match. And then finally, Prestige Wrestling with Alive or Just Breathing. It'll take place on the 16th of May. Alex Shelley will take on Timothy Thatcher. Now, for our developments that have been happening, um, a very shocking thing has happened today in Japan. Um, Pro Wrestling Wave has announced, uh, while they were doing a show in Shinjuku Face, that as you know, every year, much like we've seen with every promotion, they're going to have their annual tournament, Catch the Wave, and they announced two stardom talent will be participating. And this is a very surprising news. Sayakami Tani and of course Rana Yagami. So these two ladies from Stardom will participate in Catch the Wrestling. It's very interesting to see that these that the Stardom are now allowing their wrestlers to participate outside. So that's very interesting. Now, Tokyo Sports caught Julia at the airport. Um, apparently, she is heading to the United States, more specifically in Philly. Uh, we don't know what she's going to do there, but she gave a vague comment about where she's going, telling them that she's going to the Himalayas and stay there and shave off one eyebrow. We don't know what that meant, but it's no doubt that she probably will be in attendance for WrestleMania. Maybe that's the idea, but we'll see. Um, in, in relations to Pro Wrestling Wave, our uh, veteran wrestler Sakura Hiroda has announced uh, her divorce. To the public uh, but she did say that she's offered a match in order to um, earn money for her kids school fees so she's trying to find a way to ensure that her kids get a good education and yeah I mean she's a, a wonderful mom I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about that I've seen them on some events but it's great um, New Japan has announced the return of the G1 Climax that will happen between on the on July twentieth all the way to August eighteenth. Now, finally, our last development uh, for all of you who are going to Philly, if that's the case, if any of you, any of my subscribers are planning to make the Philly, uh, it was announced that now Kakuda, who was supposed to participate in two events, uh, one for uh, Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling Live in Philly, and the GCW versus Tokyo Show Pro, now Kakuda has fallen ill and she will not be a um, participating in these shows there has been announces for changes of the card but they apologize but uh tokyo show pro uh, apologized to the fans for her not being there i mean it sucks i mean we know that she'll be retiring in june so it's still but i think many fans here in the u.s would love nothing more than to see her but that's how it is so we'll see what happens i think that's pretty much it for we have for all the reviews and our news updates let's call it a day well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. As you know, we have TNA and um, Ring of Honor. Um, also, we I did find out there's going to be a new Bleach show coming up, uh, G Pro Wrestling version 71. I can't wait to review that one for all of you. Um, I'm so excited for that. And that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens. I can, um, Until then, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.